Fellow warm brothers and sisters, this is your brother Allah Yala. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father Yahweh. In the name of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, grace, mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Now, going into this uh, lesson in part due to a response of someone that made a comment on our page. And, uh, you know, one of the things about this is that, you know, for those of us that are laboring, that are striving um, to, you know, reach the hopeful elect and to basically, you know, bear our cross, to endure all things for the elect's sake. Um, in the process of doing that, we have to deal with a lot of our people that um, come to scoff and to try and hinder and to um, basically, you know, discourage brothers from doing what it is that they're supposed to do in the spirit. And uh, going into this comment, I just re-uploaded a lesson from months back uh, called Who's Esau Edom, the European, the colonist, the Christian, uh, the Westerner part two. OK, and, um, you know, a lot of people understand that we have multiple channels. Um, one, we have multiple channels. As you see here, uh, we have an uncensored page where we can get into topics that are, you know, of relevance and importance as of right now that are being censored by YouTube. We have a backup page where we have many of our principle-based lessons. We have um, another camp page as well, uh, Church Yahweh Hashem Yashai is lit. And then we also have another page with um, Church Yahweh Hashem Yashai 12, which is another page with some re-upload and also um, new lessons. And then the Spiritual Art of War, which just deals primarily with miscellaneous topics um, of discussion. So, you know, we have made a full proof of our ministry, you know, according to the strength and the will of the Heavenly Father as he's bestowed upon us. But there are those who basically come in and have things to say like this man um, in regards to those that are actually doing something about uh, the times that we're in. OK, so he does say excellent work, bro. Uh, but look how he switches up. But it's too late in the game for this old news. Lots of laughs. I'm just saying. We're on the cusp of a second exodus and you're not prepping, preparing the house for that, bro. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, shaking my head. This is a waste of your valuable time, bro. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, see la. The woman is traveling in labor at the work news. L left my ass off. Um, no job, no job. Come on, man. Waste of your time, see la. So you see this guy, uh, he called himself Yahooligans. Uh, Yahudite kings okay so this is the guy that many of the nation would have to basically rely on to do the work and to let them know to wake up this is the guy who's saying all this stuff not understanding that this is not only is an old an older lesson but also it's still relevant okay so we're gonna deal with um, with this real quick if whether or not a lesson on who is Esau Edom would be an old lesson concern considering the fact that many of our people still deny who the Edomites are which in order for you to know that we're in the land of the of our captivity to understand who's in power you gotta you know know exactly what the Bible says okay and this is how you measure the time diligently by knowing exactly what's going on so it is a relevant topic and we're gonna show you how relevant it is okay because when you go into Lamentations, okay, we're going to deal with an end time prophecy. Okay, Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we watch for a nation, singular, okay, a nation that could not save us. We're going to see who that saved nation is. It's going to describe them. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. Our end is come. All right. Let, let's see if you can figure out who these people are. This nation. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits. Of whom we said, under his shadow, we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. 
the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more, no more, meaning the end, no more carry thee away into captivity, meaning no more captivity when he brings the daughter of Zion back, which is basically the elect. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So this proves that a lesson on who is Esau Edom is still relevant because guess what? In the book of Lamentations, in the book of many of the major prophets, our deliverance is very much tied to the downfall of Edom. And because of so many people believing that the Edomites are another set of people, that they're all the, the, the Arab people are the Edomites and basically not understanding who the Edomites are. It is our job to basically bring the truth. And the whole lesson that was done was revealing the truth of who the Edomites are. And you happen to have a problem with it. And I would not be surprised if you have a problem with who the Edomites are. I've not, we'll see whether or not you have any work um, that can back up whatever it is that you believe in. But we're doing the work and we're doing the work of the Lord. And guess what? End time prophecy requires us to talk about Edom. It requires us to show our people who Edom is so they can know that we are in the end times and that our time has come. Okay? So that's the reason why that lesson is still uploaded and it's still very much relevant. Because guess what? If you don't want to, if you have a problem with it, that's on you. Okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and deal with this. Because, you know, a lot of these people that are out here, the majority of our people hate those that rebuke at the gate. They hate those that prophesy the truth of the scriptures. They hate those that stand up and have and who the Most High raised up and put his spirit upon them to go and preach against the enemies and to go in and to help our people return back to the Father through the gospel of reconciliation. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into this parable. This is Mark chapter 12, the parable of the vine growers. Starting at verse 1. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and digged it a place for the wine fat and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman a servant and he might that he might receive from the husband of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant and at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent another and him they killed and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What, therefore, what shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So when you go into the story of the vineyard, you'll see that there was men that were hired to go into the vineyard and do the work. And they were supposed to basically show the fruits of their labor. OK, so men were sent to do an inspection to find out what's the progress like and what did these guys do they turned themselves against those guys who were basically inspecting the wanting to see what was going on with the Lord's vineyard and they mistreated them all this is the same type of energy that guys like this have towards those that are laboring and doing the work you should not even dare open your mouth when you see that someone has hundreds of videos going back to 2000 and uh, 15 and doing the work and other brothers doing the work going out in the streets teaching being diligent and you want to run your mouth about something that you disagree with that you don't understand 
So what is going to happen for you is that you're going to have to show your work. You have to make full proof of your ministry. Okay, because ultimately, if you're not showing, doing any work, you have no faith. Because faith without works is dead, homie. We're at the end time and you have to, you, you want to run your mouth about something like that. I don't care who you are. You should be ashamed of yourself that you would even run your mouth and think that you have something to say when you should really be keeping your mouth closed. Because every idle word shall every man give account in the day of judgment. You don't tell another brother what he should post concerning this when it's still in line with the doctrine. If you have a disagreement with it, then address the disagreement with the actual doctrine. But if you don't have a disagreement with it, put your hand upon their mouth. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox to treadeth out the corn. A lot of you guys just want to go around on different comment boards and say things about this person and that person. But then when we look into what you're doing, when we do inspection, you have no works. Some of you guys wouldn't even say this to our face. You would get and run on a comment board and say this. Let's see what you got going on. Since you want to talk. Look at this. This channel has no videos. These are people that you follow, you subscribe to. These are playlists that you've made. But where are your videos? Where are your videos? Zero. No fruit. It's always the guys with no fruit that got the most thing to say. Because guess what? If you actually had something to say, you would actually do a lesson and say why we're wrong. But I just showed you one of many reasons, and I can go over, over many precepts concerning Edom in the last days. It's a relevant topic. The people got to know what's going on, who's doing it, and why. And they got to know that their time is running out, and it's, got, and it's based on the fact that the people who was prophesied to rule in the end of the world were going to be the ones that were going to implement this system that we're currently under. Because if they don't know that, or if they've been told that it's another group of people, they will not hearken. They will not say, you know, they would say, oh, you know what? We got to wait for some the Arabs to come up and they got to take over and then they got to create this system. Then they got to implement the mark of the beast. That's why you got so many of our people that are sitting around acting like nothing's going on, even though the we're blowing the trumpet in Zion to let the people know that that danger is coming. But people like you want to get up on here and scoff and say something. But you ain't got no damn videos. This is Matthew chapter 21 verse 18. Dealing with the barren fig tree. Okay, because brothers and sisters out here is hungry for the word and, and they want some information. We got multiple channels that we have put up with multiple brothers doing the work day in and day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. Spring, summer, fall, winter. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. So you, we sought fruit upon your, your tree and we saw nothing. So again, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. Shalom.